Hey everyone, it's time to look at LLDP and the confines of the command line. Now let's walk through the topology that we're going to use to illustrate this on. So what I have currently is I have R10 in our large topology connected to R11. Now they're connected to the switches, but they're also connected to each other. And what I'm doing is I'm running a serial link between these two devices using 2 slash 0, so S2 slash 0 as my interface links. Now currently what I'm going to show you is, is that we're up and running in a default mode, which means CDP is currently up and operational. Now I can illustrate that quite easily by going in here and showing show CDP neighbors. Now as we can see, we have that connection to Cat1 that we already know about, but we also see now that we have R11 and we're connected via the serial 2 slash 0 and the serial 2 slash 0 that we have on each of those interfaces as I illustrated in the drawing. Now the other part of this is, is I want to come in here and do something like show LLDP. Now actually what we want to do is turn LLDP on first. So we'll just come in Fig T and I'm going to say LLDP run. LLDP is turned on. Let's cut over to R11 and do the same thing. Config T, LLDP run. We just turned it on on both of these devices. Now if I come in here and do show CDP, what we see is all of the information that we discussed in the confines of how CDP operates. We see it's, it's hello message time, we see the hold down time, and we see the version that we're running, what's enabled. Well, I can just as easily execute a show LLDP command, do show LLDP, hit it and what we see now is we see the configurational differences. So we talked about it in the theoretical component but let's look at it at the command line and do a direct comparison between the two. So what we'll do is I'm going to grab a pen and I'm going to compare my hello times which are going to be 60 seconds by default in CDP but in LLDP notice that we're sending them out every 30 seconds. We have 180 seconds for our hold down time, 120 here and notice in this particular section, it does not tell us anything about the version in LLDP, and that's because we only have one supported version. Well, I guess would be referred to as version one. But it does give us information about that reinitialization delay, and it's telling us by default it's set for two seconds. So we've just illustrated on the command line a lot of the stuff that we had with regard to the theory. But now the question is, is simply by turning it on, is it going to be as easy to use as, say for instance, CDP? So looking at it, let's go ahead and I'm going to just grab an eraser here and I'll take all of this, oh, well, an eraser, and I'll take this off real quick. And what I want to do is I want to execute the show CDP neighbor command. So the syntax is extremely similar to what we have in CDP. So do show LLDP neighbors and hit enter. Well, right now I'm not seeing any information, but that could be because of the, the fact that I'm not running my links through. So just give me one second here. I'm on the virtualization equipment. Sometimes stuff doesn't work the way I want it to and I tried to talk long enough to give it time. So let's see what's going on here. So show LLDP neighbors. I'll try it one more time. Do show LLDP neighbors. Let's cut over to 10 and see if it's had time to discover anything. Show LLDP neighbors. So the issue here is probably going to be related to something that has to do with the way my devices, my virtual devices are running. So very quickly, all I'm going to do is I'm going to dive over to my live components, my live switches. So right now, let's see, Cat2. Okay, this is an actual show version. This is an actual 35, I'm sorry, 3750X series. So 3750E is what we're currently running, 5.02SE. All right, now with this in place, let's see what we have going on here. So I'm going to say show CDP neighbors, and let's see if we can't make this actually work here. So right now I'm connected to R1. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to force a connection to R1 on this device. Connect. And I'm connected to gig 01 on R1. R1 is a 1921 in show version and we see we're running a 1900 and the actual code that we're running is 1900 so it's 15.4 so I mean we should be good, good to go here so let's see if we got what we can do is reverse or do our lab here instead so config t 
LLDP run. Then I'm going to go to cat1 and say config t LLDP run. Show LLDP. There's our information that we have. Our status is active. Cut over to R1. Do show CDP neighbors. And hit enter. And what we see here is I have the connections for CDP, but what about LLDP? Oh, need to do neighbors. Okay, now what we see here is, is notice that I'm connected to cat1, but on this device, on R1, let's see, on, on cat1, let's see, do show LLDP neighbors. Okay, so we're sending our information. We can now detect what our neighbors look like. And again, what I wanted to do is I wanted to execute the command so we can look at some of the criteria that we're exchanging. I'm going to say show LLDP neighbors. Let me uh, exit out of this. Show LLDP neighbors detail. Now, notice the information that we're exchanging here. You're going to see that this is extremely similar to what we saw in the confines of CDP. However, just bear in mind, we're still using TLVs, but we're exchanging different TLV fields to exchange similar information. It's not identical. For instance, what we're going to find is we're actually going to be exchanging with LLDP some truncated information, which means it's not all of the information associated to our devices. It's just that it's going to be what we deem to be the most important. But again, as we go through here, we have these system capabilities. B, R, a bridge versus a router. Enabled capabilities. We're a router. We're not in, in, configured as a bridge. Our remaining time with regard to our hold down time, remember it's 120 seconds by default. The IP addresses, 101101, that's the interface that I have, the, what I have currently running on that interface. Physical media capabilities, currently I'm not advertising all of these. And that's going to lead me to a question. We talked about how we could do CDP manipulations. Uh, let me cut over to my router. So in, we said CDP, and we had the capability of doing some configurations. We had TLVs, we had lists, we could do filtering, we could do a number of different pieces of information. Source. The idea here is, is LLDP is going to be relatively similar. Here we can go in and change the hold down time, we can change the, re, the reinitialization time, delay, we can change the, the run, we can actually disable it or turn off, and then we can also affect timers as well as the base configuration. But what I want to come here is, is this idea of TLV select, very similar to what we had in the confines of CDP. TLV select, notice it gives me the capability of going through and picking things like MAC physical configuration. That's that IEEE 802.3 MAC physical address communication exchange information. What's the status? And it's embedded again in a TLV. We have the management address. We're exchanging it, but I could turn it off if I chose. We have the port description that we're exchanging it. We have power management capabilities. If we're running 802.3 with regard to the, um, the, the power for, uh, for MDI negotiation and things along those lines. Also, we have the system name that we're exchanging. And again, I could use the no form of this command and deselect any of this particular, these pieces of information. So as you can see, it's going to be very similar to how CDP actually operates. Now at the command line, again, what we're going to also recognize is I could go to an interface. So if I went to interface G01, do show UDLD, LLDP, sorry, um, neighbor, G01 is our local interface that we're using to connect to it. So let's go to there, say interface G01, just to make sure I was in the right place. And I have the capability of entering commands for LLDP here, just like we had in the confines of CDP. Now in CDP, I, I had the capability of going in here and saying, no, CDP enabled to turn it off. In the confines of LLDP, I can actually configure it such that it can either send and receive simultaneously, I can tell it not to send and only receive, or I could tell it not to receive and only send. So the main thing that we want to put in place here is, is the fact that we want to understand exactly what our criteria are if we're asked to do anything with LLDP in the CCIE lab. And so that's going to determine the fact that UDLD, 
sorry, LLDP is a little more granular than CDP with regard to some of the interface configurations. Now, with that being said, what I want to do is I want to explore it in the idea of packet capture, and we'll do that when we look at the diagnostic section in the next video. See you there.